Income tax, 2023-2024. Educator expenses. Get ready and some coffee because we're laying down the facts about income tax preparation, 2023-2024. Most of this information can be found in the instructions for Schedule 1 section of the Form 1040 Instructions Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on Line 2, Adjustment to Income, which you might hear called Above the Line Deduction or possibly Schedule 1 deductions, noting that the first half of the income tax formula is basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here we have income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. The deductions for taxes are good, and therefore we're constantly looking for things that could possibly increase the amount of deductions The major categories of deductions being the adjustments to income, which you might also see as the above the line deductions, and then what I would call the below the line deductions, which are the greater of standard deduction or itemized deductions. The above the line deductions are usually less common, less well known than some of the categories of itemized and standard deductions, but are quite important even to lower income taxpayers because you could still get a benefit from them as opposed to some items which are itemized deductions where you possibly would only get a benefit if your itemized deductions are greater than the standard deduction. All right, looking at the first page of the Form 1040, we're looking down here on line number 10. This is going to be adjustments to income from Schedule 1, line 26. This is going to be the Schedule 1. We're looking at part number 2, the adjustments to income, meaning reductions of income or, in essence, expenses. And this is going to be line 11, the educator expenses. Now, this one's been there for some time, but you probably wouldn't really know about it unless you are a qualified educator because it's one of those weird line items in the tax code where there's been lobbying for a particular kind of industry. So you get a benefit. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now... I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. That's really restricted to a one type of group of people or one uh, industry. Okay, and that might be a testament, say, to the teachers' unions, although this put, was put in place a long time ago. So so you can see how, how strong are the current teachers' unions based on how much that credit might change Uh, with inflation over the years. But in any case, adjustments to income, line 11, you've got the educator expenses. So if you were an eligible educator in 2023, you can deduct on line 11 up to $300 of the qualified expenses you paid in 2023. So if you and your spouse are filing jointly and both of you were eligible educators, the maximum deduction is $600. So in other words, If you're a tax preparer and someone says that they are an educator, then the next question is going to be, of course, are are you an educator that qualifies as an eligible educator so that we can possibly take advantage of the $300 uh, deduction that's an above the line deduction, which you might be able to get just based on the industry that you happen to be in uh, uh, as an above the line deduction. However, Neither spouse can deduct more than 300 of their qualified expenses on line 11. Now we have this question of what is a qualified expense that we have to take into consideration. 
But note that the dollar amounts are pretty low, like $300. So most people, no matter what job they do, if they're if they're passionate about their job, they might be spending more, most likely will be spending more than $300 on stuff that would basically be expensable, something that you can write off if you had a sole proprietor Schedule C type of business. So just a quick recap of the dynamics here between a sole proprietor business and a W-2 business. If you had a sole proprietor business, then you have your own business reporting on a Schedule C. In that case, you typically have to pay for your own tools and whatnot, your own supplies, and those are going to be deductible, the Schedule C, therefore, in essence, an income statement, the expenses on the Schedule C basically being business uh, deductions on the Schedule C. For W-2 employees, the assumption is the employer is responsible for providing all the tools that you that you need to facilitate your job and therefore the IRS typically doesn't allow normal kind of business expenses that you would expend in order to help you to generate revenue if you're a W-2 employee because of that assumption the employer should be providing them but obviously most of the time if we're passionate about what we are doing we're probably buying our own stuff uh, as well if we think it would be useful and teachers clearly fall into that category and the $300 limit, therefore, for an entire year, you would think is, you know, fairly low. I think a lot of teachers probably are going to spend, you know, that much money and, and therefore on eligible uh, items. But, of course, you would want to keep track of the, th those spendings to make sure that in the event of an audit, you can justify those expenditures. Although, again, you would think that an audit would likely not be triggered by a $300 but you never know, you know, I mean, maybe you're one of those radical type of instructors that tried to convince the drag queen to put more than just a thong on before the mandatory drag queen story hour, in which case the IRS may well come after you as well as the FBI. So you want to keep your records straight. Make sure you have the records straight. You might not be able to keep everything straight, but the records should be able to keep those straight. In any case, an eligible educator is a kindergarten through 12 uh, teacher, instructor, counselor, principal, or aide who worked in a school for at least 900 hours during a school year. So if you have someone that is an educator, the first thing that would come up is a teacher, but there might be some more expansive qualifications. So once again, an eligible educator is a kindergarten through 12 uh, teacher, instructor, counselor, principal, or aide who worked in a school for at least 900 hours during a school year. So once we've determined they're a qualified educator, the next question, do they have qualified expenses? Now again, usually because the dollar limit is pretty low, you would think they might clear that threshold, but you wanna make sure that they have the information in case again, the IRS or the FBI comes after them or whatnot, <laughs> you got the documentation. So qualified expenses include ordinary and necessary expenses paid. So for professional development courses, you have taken related to the uh, uh, curriculum you teach or the students you teach. So in other words, when we think about the types of expenses that are normally possibly deductible with regards to a income tax system, you would think the expenses that were ordinary and necessary are the ones that would be deductible. That's kind of the rule typically when you look at the business side of things. If you were a business Schedule C, those expenses that you had to expend in order to help you to generate revenue, you would think be deductible so that the tax applies to the net income, uh, not to the gross income. So then the question is, what types of expenses are ordinary and necessary? In this case, although you don't have a Schedule C business, but rather are a teacher, but they're allowing you to, to take those similar kind of deductions which you are providing rather than them assuming, the IRS, the government assuming that the employer is providing them. So in connection with uh, books, equipment, including computer equipment, software and services, and uh, other materials used in the classroom. So in ordinary expenses is one that is common and acceptable in your educational field. So that, that would be, you know, if you're trying to test as to whether an expense would qualify, it's ordinary and necessary in the field. A necessary expense is one that is helpful and appropriate for your profession as an educator. An expense doesn't have to be required to be considered necessary. So in other words, is, if you didn't have the thing, uh, would that mean that you couldn't do your job? You'd have to quit being a teacher? 
that doesn't make it necessary. That's not what we typically mean by ordinary and, and necessary. Uh, so once again, an ordinary expense is one that is common and accepted in your educational field. A necessary expense is one that is helpful and appropriate for your profession as an educator. An expense doesn't have to be required to be considered necessary. Tip. Qualified expenses include amounts paid or incurred in 2023 for personal protective equipment, uh, disinfectant, and other supplies used for the prevention of the spread of coronavirus. This was kind of a funny development. Not that coronavirus was funny or anything, but when the, 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 the administration basically came out, the government came out and said, look at what we did. We, inclu we included the ability to put like hand sanitizers as uh, uh, something that would qualify for the educator expenses as though that did anything because i mean I, I again i would think most educators basically are paying more than the threshold already you know and it doesn't, doesn't seem like a big win to me that i mean it would be a win to educators if they increased the level of spending like from 300 to a thousand or something like that which i'm not really arguing for i'm just saying it was it was kind of funny to me that they were bragging about that because i don't think it'll have actually an impact to anybody but there it is. Qualified expenses don't include expenses for homeschooling or for non-athletic supplies for courses in health or physical education. So you must reduce your qualified expenses by the following amounts. Excludable uh, U.S. Series EE and saving bond interest from Form 8815, non-taxable qualified tuition program earnings or distributions, any non-taxable distributions of Coverdale education uh, savings account earnings, any reimbursement you receive for these expenses that weren't reported to you in box one of your form uh, W-2. So obviously, you know, if you've got some form of reimbursement for the expensive expenses or some type of tax benefit already, then you shouldn't get a, a deduction for, for them. So if you paid for it and then you got reimbursed uh, for them by your, by the school or something like that, but again, I don't think those usually are going to apply to most people because the threshold is fairly low at $300 and, and a lot of people might have more than enough expenses to, to hit that threshold. So, so that means as a tax preparer, you know, you're going to hear educator, oh, they qualify as a teacher. Well, it's almost a default that you would think that they're going to pick up the, the, the $300 maximum. Although, again, you would still want to, of course, make sure that they have the supporting documentation. So for more details, you can to use Tax Topic 458 or Publication 529, which you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov.